all right guys so here's the next project for the morning uh, they brought this guy here no that's not the bad one this is the bad one looks like a customer or somebody I shouldn't blame the customer I don't know uh, tried to weld this up and of course I had some difficulties so they tried sanding it down but the real bad part is on this side over here what's happening is you can see some cracks that developed and most likely that's from the uh, expansion and contraction of this uh, from just getting too hot and cooling off and cracking now as you've seen me do another thing so I'm gonna preheat all these things and kind of weld it while it's hot I'm gonna try and prepare this ahead of time beforehand to clean all this junk off all this stuff off in here so let me try that first and see how bad it is and you know hopefully uh, it'll work this one's gonna be a, a good challenge for sure because it's always difficult going over somebody else's stuff especially with aluminum aluminum has, has so many pores and uh, opportunities to get oil trapped in it and impurities so uh, this one will be interesting Oh, at least for me maybe not for you <laughs> but either way let's get started before I get too far along you can already see that this guy is not flat so that is not good I must have pulled when all this welding was done and so that's going to create a problem as well and uh, putting it together like this hold on and put you down for a second here you can kind of see where the gap is now that's really not good as you can see here that's about pretty good there but over here there's a very visible gap like a strong sixteenth so I don't know if they filed it down or if it just worked while welding so I'm gonna have to see if we can get some of that out um, once I weld the inside and and slowly when I weld this outside what I'll do is I'll slowly put some bolts in here and try and crank on them delicately while I try and smooth all this other junk out and hopefully it'll just relax it enough I'll just keep tightening that guy just slightly 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 uh, like a sixteenth of a turn beep, beep. and whatever it doesn't then I can build up and and um, file down I mean what do you do kind of stuck at this point so let's continue on with the rest of how we're we're gonna go and uh, we'll do this towards the end of the the, uh, the process okay As I was uh, grinding some of this down, you can hear this piece here. It almost sounded like a layer of something. And uh, you can always hear it. Yeah, and it um, makes it challenging to get a decent weld. It looks like they laid over some weld or there's some entrapment of some sort underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and dig all that out. I really hope this is successful because this is uh, quite the effort for, for a transfer case. Um, you know, maybe they can find another one or I don't actually know or maybe they couldn't find another one right so I will be as delicate as I can when I'm putting a new weld on there try to put some small little welds just so that it creates the same thickness of material that way I don't add too much stresses along the outer perimeters so let me see if I can get this this little layers off
Yeah, it's just another layer that it is just a mess. Uh, let me keep digging. so look at that just the whole chunk just come out and as I was mentioning before that's now a hole to the bottom side to the outside I should say it was just layer kind of uh, weird so that is not good mm. you know I'm always wondering if I should cut out a square and add a piece of this in its place you know instead of having to add so much heat input pad over pad over pad uh, that that concerns me let me turn this thing around and see what it looks like on the back side <laughs> yeah so you see there's a that hole that's in there. This is all very thin, very, very thin. Let me prepare, no, actually, uh, it's hard to say, hard to say, let me see. Let me go ahead and weld the inside and leave all these here that we create some kind of thick base for me to weld up onto. And then I can address this outside with the die grinder and clean it all up as best I can. And that may actually work. Uh, that way I know that I'm not just going to uh, blow a bunch of holes through that like I did on that, that cast iron axle. So let me preheat this, clean it up best I can, and weld it from the inside. Run a, run a couple passes. Just a bunch of beads, like a pad of beads like uh, they do in, in welding school, but of aluminum. All right, let's, think, let's clean it up and get it, get it hot. Alright, so we'll let that heat up a little bit and then come back at it and start welding it up on here. This is the base that I got here. If you notice, it doesn't look like it's directly in front of it. For some reason, this fan shoots off at an angle. It doesn't really shoot straight. So that's where it's, where it's hitting. And we just go with it where, where it works. Alright. Let me see if I can weld on it, add something to it. I was checking out my camera for watching the welds. Something happened to the SD card, so it's not working. Or else I would show you some of the welds that I put on there. But let me see if you can see something. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so what I did initially was, not sure if you can tell, but I was just running the heat uh, TIG just 
arcing over the old material and what it was doing is boiling out those bubbles of the uh, impurities in the cast and impurities of what was already on there and so I'm doing it very slowly and I do I do it enough just where it creates a molten puddle you know I notice a bubble that's a little more stubborn I give more amps to it of course and then it'll boil out and smooth over and just kind of keep going over and may have to go over it a couple times to create a bit of a smooth layer of aluminum something that will accept the filler metal and so I'm gonna do that in this area here in this area here and try and get all of that out I'm starting to notice it cracking a little bit further down and I think the crack goes further into this area here but you know we're just gonna have to keep at it see we, see we can boil all those out then I put as shallow of a layer of weld as I can because this thing basically just needs to keep from leaking right and sure it's got some uh, strength to it but it should be fine uh, once we put some good solid aluminum instead of this cast so let me keep boiling all that out and seeing uh, what it looks like afterwards Alright, so as ugly as that is, that's actually very good. Um, that's about all the bubbles I can boil out of there, and which will be fine because I think I can lay a layer of some welding rod on top of it. I lowered the frequency on this machine down to 60, I think. I was at 80, and I think I'll move it back up to 80. I seem to be doing alright. And I'll start laying some nice little welds in there very delicately. I'll probably run some passes and then put it back in front of the heater so it stays all hot. I don't want it to start shrinking and then cr create uh, uh, cracks. Now once I weld this up here, I will bolt it to the other half of this uh, transfer case so that I know that it's flat flat. So let's uh, keep trucking. Let me add weld. So while this looks like a mess, it looks a little better in person. Okay, not really. It still looks like a mess. <laughs> but uh, at least we were able to fill those low spots. And so I do still have some little uh, porosity bubbles coming out. And so I think I'm done with filling in uh, any filler metal. So I'm just going to go back and forth and zigzag and try and blend all that nice and smoothly and boil out the rest of those bubbles. I will have to uh, address some of these that are along this edge right here. I didn't, I didn't touch those from the beginning, so once I smooth all that out, work my way this way, touch those up, then we can do the outside. All right, so I let this thing cool down and um, that way I can handle it a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, this has that gap in it. Now that's a pretty strong gap. Now what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> try and clean all this up. This is a lot of mess, a lot of penetration that came through, which is a positive, right? Because you know it boiled through. Uh, however, now it's an issue where it's too much and I'll try and smooth all that out as best I can, you know, and then once I start welding on here, I'll get it up to temperature, I'll, I'll heat it up again 
I'll get it up to temperature and I will slowly crank on this guy <laughs> as I run some uh, passes with a TIG to boil out those bubbles. I'm gonna crack, crank it just a little bit, a little bit more and see if I can suck it together. And you know, maybe we'll have some success that way. All these other bolts seem to have gone in, in there pretty nicely. There was a little tension on this one, but I think it'll be enough when we relax this. So uh, let's hope for the best, right? This is kind of one of those tricky things. So let's uh, keep trucking. Uh, I'm gonna now that I can, like I said, I can touch this. I'm gonna get all that with the die grinder. Okay, so here we are at the next point. I got that about as clean as I can get it. Got all the major stuff off of there. Uh, granted, a lot of stuff's gonna bubble out. Ah, I missed a spot. But um, other than this, you know, major bubbling, it should do okay once I start heating all this up and remelting all this slowly. Like I said, I'll try and crank down on those and get that warp out of it. Uh, let me clean this part up here and then I'll go ahead and put it on the on the heat. All right. All right, so this guy is darn near smoking hot. It is pretty warm. I saw some smoke coming out of it earlier. And uh, the, the gap is still about the same. Actually, it shrunk up a little bit, which is good. But probably because it's all swollen up. So again, I'm gonna start heating up this whole area and slowly cranking on this just a little bit. Well, that's pretty tight. So I don't want to break it. All right, let me put you guys on my stand and get after it. That's about as smooth as I can get it. Not really pretty, but it's gonna have to do. I ended up building up along this, uh, the joint, this side here. So I ran it kind of hot so it would pour some, uh, hopefully melt some aluminum into that crack and then touch the two surfaces a little bit better. I don't know if it'll work, <coughs> but we're giving it a shot. So this thing is plenty warm. Let me get a uh, heat gun and find out how hot it is still. <laughs> it's pretty warm. 200, 160, 190. Pretty warm. So that's good. Now we'll just leave it 
uh, joined together and let it cool off and hopefully no cracks develop so let's uh, hang tight to the next scene all right all right so putting it uh, to heat last time <clears throat> should be good well i already sat on there for about 20 minutes i'm gonna let it sit and naturally cool off but it looks like that may be it for me uh, customer should be happy i hope and uh hopefully this thing sticks together looking in there you can kind of see some of those welds i didn't dress up those welds at all that was just from me running the torch take torch over it um, you know without any filler i did have some uh, penetration coming from the other side this way which is good right so let me spin this thing around because this ah, chain's hot hot oh, Okay, where to go? There you go. So, like I mentioned, it's not as pretty. I did close up that gap pretty good, at least enough to where uh, silicone should be able to take care of that. I may or may not dress that up. I'm not quite sure. I don't want to risk losing some strength in that because it's it's pretty fragile as it is. As it is. So. Um, I guess that will do it for me. I will let you know if it holds up. Uh, or maybe I'll show some pictures here, some still pictures afterwards, once I separate it to see what it looks like. But that'll do it. So I hope you guys learned something. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, I got uh, a new TIG machine. So actually I got two new TIG machines. The TIG machine with stick welding. And the purpose for them letting me use them is because they have an art gouging feature now. So. I can't wait to start putting those to the test. Uh, they're they're good stick machine. I'm sorry, they're good TIG machines, both of them. But we're going to be mostly focusing on gouging, see if they hold up, so that they can add that to their programming. Okay, well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll give you guys some more information about those machines later. And I uh, hope you guys uh, have a good one, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.